Hello fellow plot questers, so today I will be comparing Spinoza's theological political, political treatise, uh, Plato's Republic and Machiavelli's The Prince in this epic con compare and contrast fest. And recently I actually won um, the Korean Front for the IPO to become the Korean delegation for the International Philosophy Olympiad. And the essay that I wrote for that one was about on this topic and I compared and contrasted, so I thought I might as well make a video out of it. Why not? Just some more content for me. So let's get right into it. So the actual um, prompt of the essay was from the Theological Political Treatise, where Spinoza stated that the true aim of government is liberty, not to oppress, not to rule people in fear, but to liberate them to liberate them from fear and ensure their basic rights and allow them to achieve the best happiness. And the role of a government was to ensure those basic rights. Now, this is a very interesting notion because the, the thing that Spinoza follows is basically almost very similar to Maslow's pyramid. The most basic needs are on the bottom and the, and the better or more high quality happiness or needs are up top. For example, the most bottom would be uh, food and shelter. And as it goes up, it goes from like companionship, family, validation, intellectual validation, and the, the more you go up the Maslow's Pyramid, basically you're rated as more happy or whatever. But what uh, essentially what Spinoza is saying in terms of that pyramid is that we are happy. We want to ensure that people are happy because the citizens are happy. And the, the way we do that is the government ensure the, the little the final two lines under the pyramid, like the basic stuff, like food and water and shelter and like property and stuff. And they, um, they ensure that so that people have the freedom to explore and go up that pyramid echelon, but they don't have to start at the bottom, they can start at the middle, which is what governments are supposed to do. Meanwhile, Plato had a completely different idea. He believed that a city should be virtuous. And a city could be compared to of a person. A city should be modest, a city should not have too many goods, and everyone should be doing their roles. He believed that the people of the nation should be ruled and, and kind of sheltered from outside influences via these guardian class, which he described as fierce puppies. Puppies to the inhabitants of the city, but fierce towards any outside influences who wishes to threaten it. He believed that these guardian classes would be specially trained from a very young age using virtual, using virtuous stories and songs and kind of shout them propaganda about virtue in their heads so they would grow up to be virtuous leaders. And from these, a philosopher king would be born and this philosopher king would go out of Plato's cave of ideas, which is essentially a concept where he, is, he, he believes that everyone is trapped in this cave of ideas until you gain true knowledge and you walk out. And the philosopher kid will gain true wisdom and he will guide the guardian class who are less wise but more fundamentalism, but you know, they're fierce puppies. And, and they would lead the, uh, the, lead the country to a better place. And finally, Machiavelli. In Machiavelli's The Prince, we see that he wants his monarch, his perfect monarch, his perfect prince, to manipulate the people. A good example of that is his be violent all at once strategy, where he essentially says, a ruler must be violent because otherwise the people will not fear him and fear is the best way to control the crowd. Fear and respect and a reputation. And a good way to do that is you cannot be a tyrant because that is morally unjust and 99% of the time in history it doesn't work that well. So what you should do is you should kill all your enemies at once in a very violent display of your strength and power and violence. And then, so that everyone knows not to mess with you, and then be very, very benevolent to every uh, one of your allies and your citizens. Therefore, you'll be able to gain a fearsome reputation and manipulate the people into making, into making them think that he is, you know, a good ruler. And he talks about all kinds of strategies to manipulate the crowd, manipulate the nation, how to conquer, how to make colonies, etc. So, if you do a quick sum up here, Spinoza is. Uh, both idealistic and realistic in the sense that he believes that we can use governments in order to ensure the final two little little levels of Maslow's pyramid, but he also, you know, actually comes up with a realistic way to do that, which is a democratic council. And as far as we know, that's, you know, that could technically work out and it has kind of 50% worked out. Meanwhile, Plato. 
right? So Plato is the most idealistic out of all of these because creating the perfect virtuous person, the philosopher king and the guardian class, and using even that kind of education is nearly impossible. There's a thing called teenage years, there's a thing called puberty, you know, even if we learn from a very fundamentalist family all our lives, our perspective can change in one minor incident or or even just one experience, and that can be life-changing for a lot of people, and we change, our perspectives change as we grow. So it would be, be hard to grab a random child off the street and say, you have the potential to become a guardian, and, and train him for like the rest of these years, and he may come, becomes 20, and he suddenly decides that he, want, he doesn't want to be a philosopher, and he doesn't want to rule. That, that literally could happen. Therefore, since that's very, very idealistic, let's put that as the most idealistic. You mean on Machiavelli, this is very realistic, perhaps too realistic. Because essentially what he's saying is you can be, you, you need to be cunning, you need to be really, really strategic, you need to be very manipulative in order to take control of the state and make it more powerful and expand. His goal was to unite and divide Italy at that time. And we see that in his writing, and we see that he wants a strong prince. And although his morality is kind of dubious at best. And we have these three different kind of philosophers and their ideas, and we can kind of compare and contrast them, right? Like, like for example, uh, Plato's would be very, very hard to implement. Machiavelli would and not be as hard as, as to implement if you just follow every step in his book accordingly. However, it will be morally dubious, and it will not for the people. And this is where it kind of Spinoza comes in, because Spinoza's entire government's point is to ensure happiness for the people. And I believe personally that what the entire point of a government is not to rule, but to help people, to achieve people's happiness, as it is written in the American Declaration of Independence, for example. Um, pursue the freedom of happiness, right? Freedom to pursue happiness. And I believe that's a fundamental right. And the fact that Spinoza's entire point is to help citizens made me come to the conclusion that Spinoza is the best, um, best government from these three. And I actually used Aristot Aristotelian logic to get to that point. Aristotle stated that a virtue art always between two vices. For example, courage is, bet is, a vi is between two vices as rashness and cowardice. And I, feel, I thought that that was a similar case here. Plato is an advice in considering that it is very un unrealistic and too idealistic. Machiavelli's is advice because it is too realistic. The fact that Spinoza's in the perfect middle and he wishes for a democratic government that wishes for the people and that is neither too idealistic or too realistic, I believe puts a perfect front to come to the conclusion that Spinoza's is the most government wise. And another more Plato-specific argument that I stated was about Plato's cave. I briefly mentioned it in my brief explanation of Plato's Republic, where essentially Plato has this theory that we're all trapped in this intellectual cave where we see what we want, and we see shadows, and we don't know really what it is. And basically, you know, uh, Plato believes that in order to become truly enlightened, you need to leave the cave, you need to face the light, you need to see the true world, and that at times can be painful, right? And I personally thought that process of turning around, getting out of the cave, seeing the searing light burning your eyes, and taking in everything, being overwhelmed, that process of becoming intellectual, that process of learning philosophy, learning true knowledge, learning truth, is, is what's important. It, it's the core thing of philosophy. And the fact is, what Plato does is he only opens that path for a very specific group of people and only one or two people from the guardian class that can actually become philosopher kings and become enlightened. Therefore, we must face the fact that actually Plato doesn't open people's freedom. Plato doesn't allow people to, be, to freely do what they want to do and freely get out of their cave. Instead, he shelters them and he considers them cogs in his wheels of society. And he wants, you know, carpenters to only do carpenting, to weapon makers to only do weapon making. Like, he wants people to just play their roles. And that's, you know, that's a bit strange considering they're all individual people. And that's kind of where Plato's uh, analogy of how a state as a person breaks. Because, you know, in our, in our, in our body, you know, a heart must always pump. But in a state, of course the heart must pump, but it can also do other things, right? And the fact that it doesn't open up that possibility of philosophy, that possibility of intellectual intervention, that possibility of the ultimate happiness, as according to Plato and Maslow's Pyramid, isn't available, but Spinoza allows the freedom 
gives people the freedom to think that way, to think, to get out of the cave, is the true differentiation between Spinoza and Plato's method. The I will rule over all of you using almost dystopian tactics versus I will open up true freedom so that even if we crash and burn, people can still experience and learn. And that is the conclusion I came to, ladies and gentlemen. And that was the comparing contrast that I did between uh, Spinoza's book, The Political Treaties, uh, Machiavelli's book, The Prince, and the Plato's book, The Republic. And I thought that it was a really, really fun topic to talk about and to write about. And I hope you all enjoyed it as well. And like always, your book quester, well, plot quester, Aaron the plot quester. Have a great day, everyone. Would recommend each and every one of these books, but especially The Prince, because it's just one of my all-time favorite philosophy books. Have a great day, everyone.